Okay, so today we're making a real logo for a client. Uh, let me show you who. I'm pretty excited about him. <laughs> let me just get this out of the way. <laughs> okay, so this is Sands in the Surf. He does a YouTube channel just like me, but his is about surf fishing on Oak Island. Surf fishing is kind of like regular fishing, but it's on the beach, so the surf is like the ocean. And um, also, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's he's my dad. Regardless, we're gonna treat him like a real client, just like any other. So I jumped on a consultation call with him to learn a little bit more about what he's looking for in a logo. What brings you here, Mr. Sands? Why, why are you calling oh, me today? Well, I think it's time for an upgrade. I felt like it was time for a new logo, a new look. Well, I'm gonna help you out, Mr. Sands in the Surf. Can nice. I call you that, Mr. Dad? Yeah, sure. The kids at school asked me what they were talking about, what they called their dads and stuff, and I said, my son calls me Mr. Sands. <laughs> so for my audience, can you tell us a little bit about Sands in the Surf? So Sands in the Surf, it, my last name is Sands, and my favorite type of fishing is surf fishing, and I'm kind of gotten a rep as the, the, the surf fishing go-to guy. The, YouTube channel is really about, mostly about fishing on Oak Island, but it's sort of the kind of fishing you could do in North Carolina. So people can kind of give a feel if they come to the Oak Island area, what they could expect as far as what's in season for catching fish, what baits to use, and where they could get a good a good lunch. Do you got Sands and Surf pulled up on your computer there? Can you kind of walk me through it and just tell me what you like about it, what don't you like? I think I like the color palette. I think I would like to keep the, the, the blue. And I like the logo being a circle, but I, I don't think it really, it doesn't really say, fishing channel or surf fishing channel when you look at it that's one of the things i don't like about it close your eyes and kind of imagine if your brand was a fish what type of fish would it be there are fish that are very common in the oak island waters your current graphics are very fun is that something that you like to lean into i think that my personal style when i make art is kind of whimsical i do have fun making the videos last question is what's your budget on this project um okay so this is pretty big stakes if i can't get him the logo by the first week of march he's gonna have to delay his first video of the season and i would disappoint my dad <laughs> <laughs> so to get us started, I went and got some inspiration. One of the things that Sans told me that's pretty important to him is that it fits into that profile picture circle. I like this fish because it does fit into a circle really well. This wave here almost looks like an S to me. Next one I pulled is a little bit of bonefish grill. One of the things that Sans told me in our conversation is that his style preference was that it's still fun and playful, but he also wants it to be professional and modern. I also just like the concept in general of like sticking things in between the fish head and the fish tail. <laughs> I think it could be even more playful while still being professional. I also found this logo, which obviously is a surfer, but I like this one because it's a taste advantage of the negative space in the circle. There's a couple of different types of logos. You can have a word mark, you can have a combination logo, a text-based logo, you can have an icon. This is what we would call a mascot, which is pretty simple. I also got Duolingo down here below, which is kind of more recognizable. Duolingo's logo is kind of more than just an icon. It's this character that they use throughout their marketing Material. Now, the next step was taking this inspiration and making it into ideas, actual ideas that we could show him that were unique. And I know Sans well. I've known him all my life. So it wasn't too hard for me to come up with three very strong ideas. All right, let's get started on some sketches. So the first idea we have was sort of like an S that turns into a fish. I think we could do some negative space here. Kinda looks like an embryo. <laughs> I think it could be an S that's also like a wave, or it could be two S's, or even just one S that's kind of a good typography. I think that's good for S logos. Let's do our pufferfish mascot. So we got a couple of pufferfish inspiration picks here. I like that one the best because it looks the most like an Oak Island pufferfish. We could make him a logo that's just an icon of a pufferfish that's doing kind of different things. So it can be adaptable and used in different places. I think that's really playful and knowing him, I think he would bite on it. No pun intended. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's enough for me to sell the idea. It's 
Let's move on to idea number three. The bait bucket. Let's do this one in green. This bait bucket's pretty iconic to Sands in the Surf. He's always got it in his videos. It's like a blue bucket that he carries around everywhere. He's cutting on it, he's sitting on it, he's like putting fish in it. It's in a lot of his scenes. The bucket itself could have Sands in the Surf written on the bucket. It'd be funny if it was the Yeti font in all caps like that, it's kind of bold. We could add some movement to it by having like a fish kind of like jumping out of it or jumping in it, something like that, where it's got like a fish tail maybe sticking out. I'm gonna send an email to Sands in the Surf with the sketches that we made and an explanation for all the ideas that we came up with. I asked him to let me know what he thought of the ideas. And if he hates them all, that's okay too. We'll just come up with more sketches. And then I also sent him this S logo and the Duolingo mascot just for reference to get a better understanding on his end. So, out of the three, least favorite was the S. Everyone liked it, but no one liked it enough that they thought it was better than the other ones. And I like the idea of the whimsical puffer fish, but then I'm like, is my target audience going to respond to that? The bucket seemed to be the big winner. But my problem would be, like, if you just saw it, wouldn't you think it was like a Yeti bucket commercial as opposed to a surf fishing? So, what we decided, we'd like to see a couple of examples of maybe what you would do with a pumper and a couple of examples of maybe what you would do with the Yeti bucket. Okay, so they did not like the S logo, but what they did like was the bucket and the puffer fish. So we're gonna go with those two concepts, make a draft of each one, send it to Mr. Sands, and just make something from scratch. It's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be beautiful, but it's gonna be something better than this sketch. Perfect. This one's coming along really well. All I gotta do now is add the sands in the surf. For right now, I'm just gonna go with Montserrat. I never know how to say that. Montserrat? Is the T silent Montserrat? I don't know. I've only seen it red. Okay, now I would want it to kind of wrap around. There's a couple different ways we could do that. We could try envelope distort. I don't think that's gonna work. Whoa, actually that does not look as bad as I thought it was going to. I mean, I, it is bad. <laughs> so I'm not trying to say this looks good, but I think it might look good enough is what I'm trying to say. And let's see if we make this text white. Oh, wow, that looks great. Okay, let's put this in a profile picture icon symbol thing. It's not that bad. Let's use our friend generative color. If you go to recolor, you can hit generative recolor and then you can prompt it and describe what you want it to look like. So I'm going to say the beach. So there's like two really poppy versions and then here are two like more muted colors. I think this is a great first draft of the bait bucket logo. It's not perfect but it's getting the message across. That's sort of what I was envisioning. So let's give a shot at the pufferfish logo. I'm definitely going to model after this one a lot. So let's Kind of get those eyeballs that this one has. Eyeballs can tell a lot about personality. Look, if I took the pen tool here and I did this, I mean, everybody knows this, but it's kind of just crazy sometimes. Look, now he's like an angry little puffer fish. If I turn it like this, now he's a worried, concerned puffer fish. <laughs> And if I get rid of his eyebrows, now he's just a happy puffer fish. So no eyebrows on this one, of course. I actually used the generate vector AI tool to generate some puffer fishes. We weren't going to use AI to make this logo today, but it's kind of been helpful because I've had these three puffer fish just on the side of my screen and I can kind of look at them and remember what a puffer fish looks like. Just how I've got the inspiration over here too. It's been helpful for like the colors and just trying to make sure that everything looks like a good vector. Now, last thing that this character is kind of missing for me, what do you guys think? Do you like it better off the edge or do you like it better on the fish? I think I like it better on the fish. I'm going to keep it there for now. Tell me if I'm wrong. The last thing that this little mascot is missing that Duolingo does really well is the highlights and shading. I'm going to start off with our fins by taking these and making them a little bit darker. That changes the whole thing, which is crazy, but it really does. I also made another puffer fish off camera. 
just so we would have two versions of it. I don't know which one of these puffer fish I like better. We'll just send them both to Mr. Sands. And I just, I had an epiphany, and so I know exactly what I want. I saw the buckets. I don't want to go with the buckets. Then you had the puffer fish, and really there were only two puffer fish, and the difference was one was a little bigger, one was a little smaller. Forget about the fish for a minute. Yeah. I would like that circle to have sand, the word sands in the surf. So I think what would be cool, if you can do this, is instead of just having the puffer, I get five fish. And I can rotate them through the fish oh. seasons. He got us good. He got us really good. He is getting his money's worth out of this freaking logo. Five. And we're going to try to do them all tonight. I took the bigger puffer fish here and I brought it into an emblem. I use this cool type font it's called sergio trendy it's got a little bit of nautical feel but it's still playful i also put in these hooks coming out of the n and the v to kind of fill in the space a little bit i personally like the one on the farthest here i think it has the most contrast i love the blue color i think it's very nautical but i've also got the inverted option here and just a lighter fun option in the middle. With that being said, I think we can call the puffer fish done. This would be Sans and the Surf's final logo if he hadn't had asked for four more. So <laughs> we're gonna make him four more logos and make my dad proud. So he said he wanted the puffer fish for March. He wanted whiting for April, shark for July, and a blue fish and a black drum. He didn't specify what seasons those are, but ideally he will have all of these logos and he'll swap out his profile picture for the season, which is a pretty fun idea, a pretty unique idea. And I'm pretty excited to actually make all these logos and see them in action. I also took some time Voila! I took this piece of paper and I made a couple of sketches. So we're gonna take these and throw them into Illustrator. So the first one we're gonna do is the whiting. It's kind of funny on Sans and the Surf's channel. Every time he catches a whiting, he drops it because apparently they're very slippery when you hold them. We are just gonna trace this thing out. I think this should be pretty simple and easy. I got the pen tool and I'm just gonna kinda start making our outline. <laughs> wow, removing the skin from it. I'm gonna go into stroke here and make our corners round. And now I'm gonna steal our eyeballs from this puffer fish. This fish is a little bit rough, but nothing to worry about. It's all right. Move tool to the rescue. Yeah, there you go. Not so rough anymore, huh? <laughs> wow, this is looking good now. I'm gonna grab the color of the actual whiting and go ahead and use that for now. It's kind of like a nice starlight color. I don't mind it, honestly. Kind of like it like this and almost like the tail goes behind the surf logo. That would be fun. I kind of like that dot too. That's fun. Okay, so now you can see I have recreated our puffer fish as a whiting. I just used the same color palette so I could kind of get a good idea of like highlights and shadows and apply them in the same manner that I did before for consistency. But now we're gonna take this into recolor. Oh my God. Uh, one of them is definitely just a straight up salmon. This is like black and white, but I like this. I don't know if I like this yellow. Let's see what we can do with this little brown. Obviously that's not quite super poppy <laughs> it is accurate so i think i want to go with it whiting done let's save next up is a shark let's go ahead just like we did with the last one and trace him out now i'm going to take the knife tool and i'm going to slice off his fins make some shark fin soup just kidding Make them a little bit darker. So we did end up going with a little bit more of turquoise kind of green. We'll see how Mr. Sands feels about it, but I kind of like that direction and it keeps that emblem as a blue background, which I think is really important. Shark done. Let's move on to blue fish. <laughs> 
So for my sketch for bluefish, I thought it would be really fun. Bluefish tend to school, which means they all run in a little pack together, and then you can catch multiple at one time. In his thumbnail right here, he actually caught two. So I think for bluefish, it would be fun to do two of them, kind of hanging upside down like they're caught on the line. Okay, so here's one of our bluefish. Color, I feel like it's gonna be a little tricky on here. They're called bluefish, but they don't look blue at all to me. I'm gonna see what we can do. I think that there's like this purple in here, which is kind of an interesting color. It's almost like a lavender. And then for the highlight color, it has this sort of yellow. So let's see what our bluefish looks like if we go with this color scheme. I don't know, the colors have been the hardest part of this whole process because I want them to be realistic, but I also want them to be interesting. Okay, I think this one's really fun. I love how it's like coming out of the top and the fish are like floating on top of the text on the bottom. I don't know, the, the three dimensions to it is really neat. I love the blue fish. One left, black drum. This is my sketch. <laughs> you know, I was in AP art, which is the highest level art class you can take. And you know who my teacher was? This guy. Sands in the surf. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what a black drum looks like in real life, down there deep in the blue ocean. This one's a little far off from what it looks like in real life, but it's okay. Let's trace the sketch and see how it comes out. I don't know why I'm like in love with this black drum already. I think it's looking sharp as a feather. This one works so well with his eyes and his mouth that it looks like he's gonna eat something off this hook. I kind of can't resist but to put something on that hook. I think Sands is gonna go crazy when he sees this shrimp. Subtle detail, but I think it's gonna make all the difference. And we're just gonna put it right on our hook. Okay, so as they are, here are the five logos that we've made for Sands in the Surf. It's pretty cool. I'm really liking the design of these. This is a very creative idea. I think it's something that can be done well on his YouTube channel. And these fish can be taken out of the emblem at any point, thrown on a t-shirt, thrown on a bumper sticker, whatever. I think that he's gonna have a lot of fun using these designs. Now it's time to present them to Mr. Sands and see what he thinks. As long as he doesn't ask for five more logos, I think will be good. Today, Mr. Sands, we're showing you your final logo. Open up that PDF. It's called Brand Guidelines. These are your five unique logos. <laughs> oh, nice. So you see you got the pufferfish, the whiting, the shark, the bluefish, and the black drum. Per your request, we added the spike on the whiting. We added the gills and the teeth to the shark. We tilted the bluefish a little bit more towards the U. On your left is typeface and typography. So I found you this fancy font called Sergio Trendy. That's a name you'll start to get used to. On the right side, you have color palettes. So your two main colors here are the circle hook gray. It's something that you can use for headers and things like that where you might use black. And the sands in the sea blue, which is that same blue as that emblem circle on the logos. And you see that full gradient. These are all colors pulling straight from your logo characters. And then bottom left, we got you a couple of mock-ups that will be fun to look at. I'm ready to start plugging it in. Okay guys, it's just me and you now. That was awesome. That was the best logo design ever. Making it for a YouTube channel, making it for my dad. I don't know, it's a lot of fun. So this is the outro now of the video. If you're done watching, you can leave. But if you want, I kind of got a few more things I want to say so you can stick around. <laughs> First of all, you're probably wondering, what the heck is going on? Why was Grayson in like five different locations in this video? Where is he now? Why is the lighting so weird? Why does it look so bad? We're getting a new space. We're kind of upgrading what we've got going on right now. It's gonna look a lot better. It's gonna sound a lot better. The next videos that we do, moving forward forever, 
are going to sound a lot better. They're going to look a lot better. You're going to have a lot more consistency coming from my end. So thank you for watching and for being a part and sticking through this uh, this process of getting used to making YouTube videos. But I'm really happy to be here and I'm excited that you're here too. If you really like this video, I actually have a full-blown playlist that I made just for you, just for you. Not for me, not for anybody else, just me and you. And it's right here. So if you like this video, there's like a bunch others that are just like this one, some even better than this one probably, that you can click right there and you can watch them. Now, if you've watched every single one of those videos, you can actually just stay tuned. And next week, I have another video for you because I post a video once a week, weekly videos on this channel. We've been doing that for like six months now. So we're gonna keep doing it. It's really great. I hope to see you next week, next time, or watch the video right now if you wanna see more. Stay tuned. And I don't know how to end it. Um, what did my notes say? See you then. Stay tuned and <laughs> see you then.